As Ganiji said, this week we'll be going to the fifth body of Japji Sahib. Now I remember growing up, this was the Panch body is taught to us, isn't it? No matter, no matter which family you come from, the kids are always sat down and the Kriban, I'd say 70-80% or more than that of our youth grow up having heard Panch body the part and taught it. So it's very important that when we get to the end of this Panch body, huh, that we try and understand key, although it is a sort of a summary of Japji Sahib as well. It's not big time recognized, but actually Panch body is very important and has a nice summary at the end. So I thought the, a nice way to start off would be just to read up to the end of the Panch body huh, together as a, as a Sangat. Then we go to the fifth body and just try to understand it a bit more. So, Maharaj Kirpa Karan, help us in this prala. Vaheguru Ji, Ik O Ankar, Sat Naam, Karta Purkh, Nirpao Nirvair, Akal Murat, Ajuni Saipam, Gur Prasad, Jap, Aad Sach, Jugad Sach, Happy Sach, Nanak Hosi Pi Sach, सोच है सोच ना हो गई ये सोची लखवार चुप है चुप ना हो गई ये लाए रहा लिबतार पुखियां पुख ना उतरी ये बन्ना पुरिया पार सहस से आन पा लख होए ता इक ना चले नाल किव सचियारा होई है किव कूडे तुटे पाल हुकम रजाई चलना नानक लिखिया नाल हुकमी होवन आकार हुकम ना कहया जाई हुकमी होवन जी हुकम मिले बड़े आई हुकमी उत्तम नीच हुकम लिख दुख सुख पाई है एक ना हुकमी बक्सीस एक हुकमी सदा पवाई है हुकमे अंदर सब को बाहर हुक्म ना कोई नानक हुक्म में जे बुझे तो हम मैं कहे ना कोई गावे को तान होवे किसे तान गावे को दात जाने निशान गावे को गुण वडियाई आचार गावे को विद्या विखम विचार गावे को साज करे तन खे गावे को जी ले फिर दे गावे को जापे दिसे दूर गावे को विखे आदरा हदूर कथना कथी ना आवे तोट कथ कथ कथी कोठी कोट कोट देता दे लंदे थक पाहे जुगा जुगंतर खाही खाहे हुकमी हुकम चलाए राहो नानक विक्से वे परवाहो साचा साहिब साचनाए 
ਪਾਖਿਆ ਪਾਉ ਅਪਾਰ ਆਖੇ ਮੰਗੇ ਦੇਹ ਦੇਹ ਦਾਤ ਕਰੇ ਦਾਤਾਰ ਫੇਰ ਕੇ ਅੱਗੇ ਰੱਖੀਐ ਜਿਤ ਦਿਸੈ ਦਰਬਾਰ ਮੋਹ ਕੇ ਬੋਲਨ ਬੋਲੀਐ ਜਿਤ ਸੁਨ ਤਰੇ ਪਿਆਰ ਅੰਮ੍ਰਿਤ ਵੇਲਾ ਸੱਚ ਨਾਉ ਵਡਿਆਈ ਵਿਚਾਰ ਕਰਮੀ ਆਵੇ ਕਪੜਾ ਨਦਰੀ ਮੋਖ ਦੁਆਰ ਨਾਨਕ ਏ ਵੈ ਜਾਨੀਐ ਸਭ ਆਪੇ ਸਚਿਆਰ ਥਾਪਿਆ ਨ ਜਾਏ ਕੀਤਾ ਨ ਹੋਏ ਆਪੇ ਆਪ ਨਿਰੰਜਨ ਸੋਏ ਜਿਨ ਸੇਵਿਆ ਤਿਨ ਪਾਇਆ ਮਾਨ ਨਾਨਕ ਗਾਵੀਐ ਗੁਣੀ ਨਿਤਾਨ ਗਾਵੀਐ ਸੁਨੀਐ ਮਨ ਰਖੀਐ ਭਾਉ ਦੁਖ ਪਰ ਹਰ ਸੁਖ ਕਰ ਲੈ ਜਾਏ ਗੁਰਮੁਖ ਨਾਦਨ ਗੁਰਮੁਖ ਵੇਦਨ ਗੁਰਮੁਖ ਰਹਿਆ ਸੁਮਾਈ ਗੁਰ ਈਸਰ ਗੁਰ ਗੋਰਖ ਪਰਮਾ ਗੁਰ ਪਾਰਬਤੀ ਮਾਈ ਜੇ ਹੋ ਜਾਣਾ ਆਖਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਕਹਿਣਾ ਕਥਨ ਨ ਜਾਈ ਗੁਰਾ ਇੱਕ ਦੇਹ ਬੁਝਾਈ ਸਭ ਨਾ ਜੀਆਂ ਕਾ ਇੱਕ ਦਾਤਾ ਸੋ ਮੈਂ ਵਿਸਰ ਨ ਜਾਈ ਗੁਰਾ ਇੱਕ ਦੇਹ ਬੁਝਾਈ ਸਭ ਨਾ ਜੀਆਂ ਕਾ ਇੱਕ ਦਾਤਾ ਸੋ ਮੈਂ ਵਿਸਰ ਨ ਜਾਈ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ now in that panjvi body the word guru comes a couple of times before that it's only really come at the end of the gur prasad then if you know it's in the panjvi body it comes a number of times it go comes through when we say gurmukh nadan gurmukh vedan gurmukh rahya samai then again gur isar gur gorakh parma gur parvati mai and then again gura ek deh bujai so this this word guru is in there quite a bit and this is kind of like one of the interesting things of this body that there's this thing about guru it's kind of like a summary this body refers to a lot about guru and it also talks a lot about wahi guru and sometimes we think there's a bit of a tension in gurbani you know sometimes it gets a bit confusing sometimes satguru is talking about guru nanak sometimes satguru is talking about wahi guru and for the arm person it can get a bit confusing even people like myself i am an arm bandha so you think is it satguru why guru is satguru guru nanak what are we talking about because we like to have clarity you know we are creatures of reason we like to have a little bit of clarity in what we're thinking now we'll talk about this because sometimes you can take that guru to mean guru guru nanak tan guru granth sahib ji and sometimes you can take that guru to mean wahi guru so in this body there's almost like two meanings depending on which one you want to look at it if you want to look at it as guru nanak and all the gurus and guru granth sahib ji you can see it this way if you want to look at it as wahi guru you can see it another way but both are also important to explore it's not just one is the right way i'm not intelligent enough or knowledgeable enough to know which one is right so what we try to do is kind of present you with different views and then you know whichever one feels right for you then that must be the one that works so now tapya na join if you look at it just as wahi guru as god the simple translation means no god cannot be installed so one way of looking at it could be ki you can't make idols like we have guru granth sahib ji here but you see if we make something into an idol and i see but puja nahi karte we don't worship idols so it can refer to idol worship so wahi guru when guru nanak is talking to sits he says you can't make god you can't just install god you know you just make a platform put something there and go look rab aa gaya another way of looking at the same thing is to say ki look guru nanak ji refers to wahi guru as sat guru many times you write the big navasa divar he goes balhari gur apne dyohari sadwar who's guru nanak's guru <laughs> he said gur apne who's guru ji talking about and that can become about wahi guru now we know that when gur nanak ji went to the throne of wahi guru when he got given the guruship 
one of the things that Waiguru said to him is that I'll be your Guru. The tradition of Guruship is very important. So when Guru Nanak Ji goes and talks to the Sid and says, I have my Guru, being the great Guru, Satguru, they asked him, Ki, what is, who made this Guru a Guru? Your Guru, who made him a Guru? And they said, there's a thing called a Thapya tradition. A tradition in India which refers to how you get your guruship. Either you get your guruship because your dad was a guru, and then you get made into a guru because you're the follower. You know, you're the next one in line, like the queen. You know? And then, or you get your guruship from the idea that you're chosen by your guru as being the best student, and then you become the guru, like Guru Angad Dev Ji was. So, the the way of tapi refers to the guruship tradition which is by being chosen as your guru. Now, for example, there's a famous yogi called Goraknath. If you go to India, there's a place like Gorakmata. Now Gorak, when he talks about guruship, and this is not from Gurbani, but he says, look, Ishwar hamara chela panije machindra boliye nati niguri pirthi parle jati tate ham ulti thapna thapi. So he says, which is interesting, he says, look, at this moment, my status is so much that Shiva is my Jela. Machindra, who is actually his own guru, he goes, that's also my, te my student. He calls me his teacher. So he's become so high, his own guru calls him his student. And also, Machindra was supposed to have his guru as Shiva, who is his guru's guru. And even his guru's guru is now calling him Jela. He's his chela. So he goes, but now I've become so high, however, without this tradition of, of being, um, of guruship, without this guruship tradition, everything would go crazy. The world would go crazy. Yeah? So he says, he, because of that, I change things around. He's become at the top, he swaps it back around. He says, I change it around, ulti up. He become ulti and he's become a guru himself. He's become a student himself. Ulti Thapana Thapi, so he's become a Guru. So in that way, you can understand that Wahi Guru, obviously, in this case, Guru Nanak Guru is Wahi Guru. But he says, Yo janda. That Guru that he's referring to can't be put into position because of a Thapi. He is the original Guru. He's the Aad Puruk. Yesterday, the Hukum Nama from one of the Kirtan programs was Aad Puruk, the original being, the original one. That's Guru Nanak Dev Ji's Guru. He says, no one gave my guru a guruship. Thapiya na jai. Then, kita na hue. God cannot be made. In the same way, that guru, one way we can see God can't be made. You can't just take a stone, carve it up and it becomes into guru. But another way of relationship between the guruship tradition would be that you are father to son, made out of bindi. Look at the bindi guru. The previous one is called nadi guru, as in thapi. And this is bindi guru. It doesn't work. Because Waheguru has no father or mother. Waheguru is by himself, made himself. So, and we can even understand that from our Guru. Guruji didn't give the Guruship to his own sons. And they, say, they call it Ulti Ganga. Ganga went the other way. It didn't go from him to his sons. It went to his best Chela. So, obviously we don't believe in Devi Devte. And we don't believe in idol worship. So this refers to that as well. The next line, Ape Aap, talks about this now. Ape Aap. Now some people say Ape Aap just means by himself. But it also refers to Sepang. That no one made Waheguru. You see, Ape Aap, Niranjan Sui. Ape Aap can mean that Waheguru doesn't depend on anybody. Behemotaj is another word to use. It's independent. Waheguru is independent. And the Shabbat we're going to sing later on is Satgur Mera Behemotaj. My, my Satguru is independent. No one made him into a Guru. So why Guru we can talk about. But also our Guru didn't become a Guru from either Hinduism or Islam. A lot of people now say, well, Tursi Bas, you're a Hindu Mat. Some people say, you're Islamic Mat. And I had a good question. There was a guy who said, well, everything in Sikhi is based upon Islam anyway. And I said, well, I said, hold on. So you're saying that we basically come from Islam. But yet all the Hindus tell us, that we were basically based upon Hinduism. So do the Hindus think that Islam is the same as Hinduism? 
Or do the Muslims think that Hinduism is the same as what they do? No. Yeah? They don't buy that part, but they'll buy us being part of them. But we're independent, we're unique. We say, oh, Villa. We say, Villa ke hi ke hai. Yeah, that Guru's given us this, this, guru, this month that he's given us is unique, but everybody wants to be a part of it. They want to claim it for themselves. So we are independent as well. Now, Sapon can be like, for example, Aapine aap saajiyo, aapine rachiyo nao, dui kudur saajiye, kar asan bitho chao. Because you yourself made yourself. Aapine aap saajiyo. Then, aapine rachiyo nao. You yourself made your own name. So the first two things were made was Vaheguru and their name. And then, dui kudur saajiye, kar asan bitho chao. You're sitting inside this world and you're enjoying it. So Vaheguru is not anywhere far away. For us, Vaheguru is right here. And also, if you understand that at that time when they're talking to Sid, the Sid said, okay, so your guru hasn't come from the tradition that somebody made him a guru. Then, well, who, they say, well, hold on, what about Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh? You see, because those are the guys that made the world. Because where did they come into it? And is, we say, why guru made them as well? So why guru is above them and made them? We'll come to that later on. And Niranjan Soy. Niranjan Soy, now obviously Niranjan, in Punjab, if you know, when you put kajal and surma in the eyes, that's called anjan. And what it means is impure. It refers to basically a dal lagya. And niranjan means pure, without any dal, totally pure. So why Guru Mahara says, api ape ape, and then niranjan soy. That why Guru is totally pure, without any dal whatsoever. Now, what can happen with this? See, when Imara says, Niranjan Soy is that the creator is free of Maya. Now in the old days, people used to get confused about Maya. They go, so Maya is like the devil. Like for example, in Islam, they say the devil is Shaitan. And that God is here, and devil is here, and devil is confusing us. So they'll blame everything on the devil, and God is pure. But in this, see the problem is that people will see that Maya that confuses them. They don't know where it comes from. And then when they think that Wai Guru is pure, then they want to be free from Maya. So automatically, when you think Wai Guru is pure, part of the problem was people would then go off to mountains. They'd go off to mountains and they say, I want to be pure. Wai Guru is pure. I want to be pure. I want to stay away from this world. And then the next line Mara says, listen, I know Wai Guru is pure, but Jin Sevya Dil Payaman. Don't escape. Don't escape anywhere else into the far woods and the forest. The line is giving the example, keep, you have to stay in the world. And what that really, Jin Sevat and Payaman is probably up there now, only though those who will serve will get respect. You won't get respect by retiring off into mountains and start doing bhakti in the mountains. But you won't get the respect that you want in the Dargah. In the Dargah of Waiguru, the court of Waiguru, the respect will come from doing Seva. So this is kind of like the an answer. Because Guruji is teaching these yogis and the Siddh. You know? So now it becomes that thing is, the world is not a negative, it's a positive. It's a place where you can learn about doing serving others. It's actually a taransal. It's a school of learning. It's not a place where it's just evil and you have to get out of it. The world is positive, not negative. And for six, we have to engage with the world. And there's a line from Gurbani, it says, which dunya sev kamaiye, ta dargan dargeh basan paiye. If you earn seva in this world, then you will get a place in the next world. So then we think, okay. Another thing that refers to this is that Maya, in Sikhi, Maya is made by Waiguru. It's not something which is that Waiguru made and then that some evil, you know, like in Shaitan we talked about earlier. Shaitan was an was a angel, he turned against um, Waiguru. Off he went and decided to turn man, mankind against Waiguru. We don't have that concept. What we have is that Maya is made by Waiguru. We don't have a devil. And in Hinduism, Maya is ignorance, is cause. But in Sikh, he says Maya is just made by Waiguru. There's a line about this. Ape kare karai ap ikna sutya de jagai. Some people, he does everything by himself, and then some people he wakes up. So it's Kirpa. We don't worry about Maya, we just focus on Kirpa. The solution is in Kirpa, it's not in worrying about Maya. 
And the way to give, if we say, okay, why do you made Maya? Why do also gave us the tools to destroy Maya? It's not a why do so, uh, you know, mean. It gives us a problem. It doesn't give us a solution to fix it. The solution is given. Guru is the solution. Guru is being given by Y Guru. Guru didn't choose to be Guru. Guru got made Y Guru. And the Gurbani also gives us a solution. Eco is a big problem. That's the, that's the basic cause of Maya. And there's a, there's a line from Gurbani when um, Mara says, this, this world is made by Maya ta mohini tene kiti jin tagoli paya. That Maya is made by Vaheguru and it confuses you. It's a tagoli. It's like, a, it's like a something in the way which will rob you. You know, it's like uh, you press a button and it's going to, you're robbed. Ma the Maya has made that button. So we'll go up to Maya, we'll press it and then we'll get robbed. It's a bit confusing. You think, why did God make it? Make it simple. Why not make it? But the way is also given. Then the next line it says, Kurban ki tatise vittojin mo mithalaya. I'm a sacrifice to that one who made moho, this mitha mo. Mo is attachment. Even moho is made by Y Guru and it takes us away from Y Guru, but we don't complain about it. People want to complain. Who do we complain to? We don't complain. We say the Maharaj made it. Fair enough. We accept the system. The system is made by Y Guru. We accept it. The next line says, Satguru ka upadesh santu. Hove tere nale. Listen to the Updesh of the Guru, this will go with you. If you stay in this such of the Guru's teachings, Maya won't touch you. So the solution is given by Guruji. And when we look at Seva, we have to sort of break it down into three different ways. There's Tanadi Seva, Manadi Seva and Tanadi Seva. So we have to understand that, you know like... Um, before you start doing seva, you need to understand what seva is. It's like someone gives you a job. Here, go and do this job. You say, how do I do it? In the same way, like um, for those of us like who are grown up in the Western world, sometimes we don't know what seva is. So you know, you imagine someone who's drinking, and then they say, oh, I'm going to stop getting drinking. But they might just buy their makes points. Because they might think that's seva. <laughs> yeah, it's not that easy. To, you have to understand what seva is first. My personal example was the same. At university, you know, everybody's like uh, bunning and drinking and all the rest of that. And you think, okay, maybe I'll help someone. By doing something bad for them, I'm helping them because they're too drunk to do it themselves. But that's not really seva. And Maya says, Vidya vichari, ta parupakari. First you vichar the vidya, the knowledge that he gives us, and then you might be able to do some parupakar, help somebody else. First we need to think, then we need to act. Without acting, without thinking, you just end up doing something that could be wrong. So Mara says, first, listen to Guru, Updesh, think, and then you learn about Seva. So in Sikhi, Seva is of three types. Your body, Tandi Seva. Your mind, Mandi Seva. And the last one is Tandi Seva. So we'll just go through those quickly, and then we'll sing a little bit of Simran, which refers to this. The Tandi Seva, your body. How can we serve Guru with our body? Uh, the obvious one is obviously, you know, go to Langa, wash dishes, help cook the food. In the Gurdwara, there's loads of seva that needs to be done. Washing up, doing chores, have the seva. This is all physical seva, using your hands and your feet. And there's a famous story of Guru Gobind Singh Ji, that some Sikh came up to him and said, Guruji, I want to do your, I want to, I, I'm, I, I really uh, love Sikhi, I want to do your seva. And Mara said to him, show me your hands. And then they felt his hands, they were very soft. Mara says, your hands are too soft really, to seva kittini, with your hands. And they sent him off to Langar, to say to Pandey Manj, let your hands get a bit strong, you know, and with, that, with the Punjabi hands, you the, the farmer who works in the field, they do some hard work, they get those lines, they get the dirt. And the, the thing about Sikhi is, that we do dasa nawadi kirt. Say kirt kamani, they say earn it with your hands. And there's something beautiful about a guy, who wakes up and does some horrible job, but he earns his money honestly. In Sikhi, we don't have this system of saying the person who earns money from maybe working on a computer, like I do, is doing something good compared to the guy that's working, doing a simple job, you know, maybe he's a, a road cleaner, you know, not very educated job, but he's doing his earning honestly. And for Guru, that's important. We heard the story a couple of weeks ago about the guy who was a grass cutter, and he brought that coin to Guru Hargobind Sahib Ji. 
Yeah? And Baikaya was a name that I was taught. That was his name. And Guruji took that coin, was so important to him, he gave him everything he wanted versus all the riches we could give. So Tandi Seva can be about earning your living honestly as well. Another way we can say about Tandi Seva is keeping your Panchka card, giving your body to your Guru and saying, Guruji, whatever you want me to do, I'll do that. It's a bit scary sometimes from the outside. We think, oh, I don't want to look like a Singh. It's, you know, they... Honestly, when I came into Sikhi, I didn't want to be a Singh. <laughs> I just wanted to find out what Sikhi was about. It got a bit contagious and then I became a Singh. But previous to that, I didn't really want to have a big Dari in the beard. I quite liked myself as I was. But the thing is, is you think yourself, giving yourself to your Guru is part of that. And then afterwards, Maharaj Di Kirpa, you like the Rup. You think it's beautiful. So Tandi Seva can also be following your body and giving it to Guruji. Another way we can do Tandi Seva is Tanam Yud and Shahidi. In the old days, people knew about Shahidi. They did a lot of it. Now in the West, like maybe one or two in a, a 10 years, 20 years that I've gone out and done given Shahidi. We've forgotten about that tradition. But in the old days, when there was a battle, people queued up to go and fight for Sikhi because that was a way to do Seva of the Panth. And we salute the Shaheed. Shahidan Upanam. It's a common saying. Because they did the Seva with their body. Mandi Seva. Now, Mara says, Ki Gurki Seva Sabad Vichar. Vichar. That the Guru Seva is to listen to the Shabad and contemplate it. Think about it. Mandi Seva can mean reading Gurbani and not just reading it like parrot fashion like I do. But really thinking about it. You know, when you put your time into really thinking about why is Vichar so important? Vichar is so important because Guru Sahib says, he, this is Amrita Vela Satchanao Vadiai Vichar. Really thinking about something. Last night I was thinking, just to even think really seriously about your life, according to Guru's words, is a big seva. If we just stop and take two minutes out and think, what am I doing with my life? Is it really doing, going the way I want it to? I got this, the theory, that Guru Sahib's given me, but I'm actually following it. And it's like a slap in the face sometimes, if you really just stop and think, am I actually doing what I think I want to do? Am I actually focusing my life upon what Guru Sahib is teaching me? Or am I just toddling along like everybody else, hoping one day all the problems in my life will go away, then I'll do Sikhi. <laughs> That's what we think. We put it off until one day the kids are grown up and the house is, mortgage is done, and then, then, then I'll do Sikhi. That's what we keep putting it off. The Maharaj is saying, hold on, what if you die halfway? As you're walking towards your goal, where you can do Sikhi one day, what if you die? No one knows. So we have to do it every day. It's, it's a nitta nitta jivan. It's a nitta nim. Do it every day. Take the time out. You won't lose money by doing Sikhi. A Guru Da you will never lose money by following Sikhi. And people think, no, I, might, I will do. The business deals will fall through. They won't fall through. You won't lose. You won't lose in your exams by following Sikhi. If you follow Sikhi, Maharaj will take care of it. Tirikara baso harjana pyare satagur tumre kaj sawari. Maharaj will always take care of our works. So if we put Sikhi first, make it our focus, we will benefit. And also, learning Gurmukhi is a big seva. Like in our West, you know, we live out here. We just read the Romanized stuff. The Romanized stuff. It's all right, but it's not really independence. You're always relying upon Sikhi to the max or somebody else. So learning Gurmukhi is a big seva in this world. Because you know when someone re shows a Bani up and no one knows what it means. <laughs> Imagine that situation. There's a bit of Gurbani up and everybody's walking past it and no one knows what it means. But if you learnt it, you could then do seva for the rest of the Sangat. So Mandi seva could be learning Gurmukhi as well. Learning to pronounce it, learning to understand it is also seva. On, you know, uh, for many years going to Gurdwara, uh, you'd find that um, I, somebody came up to me once and they said, "You're walking on the Kirpan and a, uh, you know you're wearing your kakas and stuff." He goes, "Do you know that when we got into Sikhi years ago, we go to Gurdwara and there wouldn't even be somebody to read the Hukumnama out properly to explain it." No one even with a kirpan to do the pork of prashad. Even the gyanis wouldn't have the kirpans. Sikhi at those days was really hard. In this, in this country, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago, 
You couldn't have a program. There'd be no one there with a kirpan to do the pog. So, in many ways, following Sikhi is a seva for the Pant. Just by you becoming a Sikh, you're doing seva of the rest of the Pant. Because when I got into Sikhi, one of the things that I remember realized was I'd never met a Sikh that followed it. I was 21 years old, I'd never met a Sikh who was my age that followed Sikhi. And when I first saw a Sikh, he's still a friend of mine now, I was amazed. And we were just, you know, outside the Gurdwara here actually. And you know like when you're up here down there, you talk about girls and stuff, how we all are, like the Munni and stuff. You come into Gurdwara and you think you're checking out people. And this thing didn't. And I was shocked. My age, educated but not at university, but he didn't want to check out the girls. And I thought to myself, who is this guy? <laughs> I've never met a guy like this before. It's a seva just to be a Sikh. And then Tandi seva, money, your wealth. Putting your wealth to the right use. Now one way seva can be that when we do the right thing, is seva. To not do the wrong thing is also seva. So not earning your money by doing the wrong thing is also a good thing. Like recently there was a very good Kirtani in the UK. He was an expert in Taos, which is uh, you know an uh, instrument that Guru Hargobi and Sahib themselves invented. It looks like a peacock. Unfortunately, this guy, because of Maya, he ended up committing a crime, a bit of fraud, and he got sentenced. Now, the Bajala's photo went all over the whole world. Here is a guy who's an expert in Sikh music. It's our fault as well. We're not really doing seva of him and supporting him with money. So he resorts to us credit card scams and stuff like this. But he got done and he got sentenced. So earning you're living honestly is a kind of a seva as well, to not do the wrong thing. And even if you think, you know what, no one's going to know, don't do it. Your kari are like kind of reminding you, you don't do it. Doesn't matter if you go a bit less hungry, a bit more hungry, don't do it. And there's a story about Guru Har Gobind Sahib Ji, that when they met a Sikh who was very rich and very arrogant about how rich he was, on the way that he was coming down to see Guru Sahib Ji, on the way, there was another Sikh who was quite poor and that poor Sikh was a bit hungry and this Sikh had bought honey for Guruji and the Sikh had asked for some of it because can I have some of that shed? and the rich guy said no it's not for you it's for Guru Hargob inside I'm not going to give it to you and when that Sikh came to Guruji to give him the shed, the honey Guru Sahib turned it down I don't want it with Manuni Jaidi this hankari um, what you've got I don't want it and he was surprised because Malik, but this is one of the best uh, poem, uh, this is one of the best, you know, stuff out there. Mara said, he guru da mu, grieve da mu, guru di golub. That the poor person's mouth is the guru's golub. If you want to give something to your guru, give it to the poor person. And this is Tandi Seva as well. To give our money to the poor people, to give our 10%, even if you think we're going to lose out, give it. You won't lose out, Mara ji kirpaya. And then also, giving money to do prachar and kirtan. Our pant, like you know, you go to a, um, a mosque, they've got full-time imams just teaching people. You go into a mosque to ask them a question about Islam, they will not let you go. <laughs> they'll sit you down, give you five books, put all the leaflets in front of you, call you in the next week, they'll bring you in to their istriyatan. In a good while, you'll be lucky if they even tell you what Sikhi is, let alone give you a book. There's no... Not even, let's not, we're not preaching outside. If someone even walks in to ask us, we don't tell them anything. And we need to put money into either training the Gyanis in English fluently or hiring people from this country to do Prachar. And we need to also do Seva of the British UK public. Not just feeding ourselves here in London, we're already the Fed. So they call it already Hagi. 90% of us, yes, the 10% that come from Punjab, they might not have some people. We serve them with Langar. Most of us were just the Fed already. But there's people in this country that need Seva as well. We should be being relevant to this society. When we start being relevant to this society, then people will say, who are you guys? Who are you guys with Telepens and Bears coming and giving me food? And that's Seva as well. Because Sikhi is both. I see Deg, Deg, Fateh. Actually this Deg, Deg, Fateh is very important. Deg means Langar. Prashad, Langar, this is Deg. And Teg is Kirpan, safety for people. Kirpan is about Kirpa. So what we're looking to do is to give people food and safety. That's the castle's job. To provide food and safety and freedom to everybody. 
That's Deg Deg Fatih. And at the moment, you know, when we look around our Gyanis and our Kirtanis, we're not really supporting them. There was a, there was a Sikhna article by IJ Singh and a few other people was talking about contracts for Gyanis. Do they have employment contracts with work hours and chutiyam? Do they have proper respect for what they have learned? And as a punt, we are failing our Kirtanis and our Gyanis. I know I'm sitting here on the stage and saying it, but this is true, it's a, it's a kind of a harsh truth. And we need to look at that properly. There's some people that made recommendations and we should be reading about these things and looking into how we can take care of our own people. Because they are the main people. They travel across the world, they leave their families behind and they come here and we don't even value them sometimes. Now, we just go into this word man and then we'll talk about ta darge pa ye man. Mara says, ki seva. Sorry, I forgot the line. So by doing seva, we get respect. And man can be also what you want in this life. Money gives us respect. So by doing seva of guru, you become successful in this world. You do become successful. People give you respect. But also, you find respect in the next world. If we do seva, we will get respect. So we'll do a little bit of a, a simran now. This Shabbat um, is about Guru and about why Guru and it says Guru Jaisa Nahi Ko Dev Jis Mastak Laag Jis Mastak Paag So Laga Sev If we just do Guru Seva We're coming to the 40 minutes in now so we're a bit short on time So if we do Seva of our Guru It's not just that Oh I done Seva We're lucky to get Seva we're lucky. Just mustak apart, so laga se. Those of us who are lucky will get seva. It's a great thing that we can get to do seva. We should be thanking Wai Guru for giving us that seva. So this is the Shabbat about Guruji, and then we'll go into a little bit what happens after this.
Simrit Ved, Par Brahm Gur Nahi Ved. Nanak searched all the Simritis in the Vedas and his conclusion was ki there is no difference between Vaheguru and Guru. So by doing Seva of Vaheguru, we can do Seva of Guru. By doing Seva of Guru, we are doing Seva of Vaheguru. It's a very deep statement. And the rest of this body goes into that in a bit more detail and explains that why Guru and why Guru are almost the same thing. And the funny thing is, within why Guru is the word Guru. You think about it for a minute. Vahe Guru. Guru is inside that as well. So we call why Guru why Guru. We don't say that Guru is God, but what's the difference? It's an interesting thing to ponder upon. Don't have the answer because at the end of this body it says Ki Nanak won't. If he knew, Jeho Jana, Akha Nahi, Kehna Kathana Jai. I can't explain the whole thing. But the next bit, when we talked about before Seva, Jin Seva Tan Paya Man, then Nanak Ka Viye Guni Nidan. Nanak says, Sing, Sing. That's Seva Karo and Sing. So when you're doing Seva, keep your mind on Gurbani as well. That's one thing, let's say. That when you're doing Seva, try to stick on Gurbani, not just think about your life and whatever's going on in the world. To focus upon why good at the same time. And it says, but how can we do this? How do we do this seva? And how do we do this singing? Gaviye, suniye, manrakhiye, pao. While singing, listen to it. Sing, but also listen to what you're singing. A good example is in my own family, people listen to Keetan all the time because they got it on Sukhsagar and Amrit Radio and all the other radio channels. But they're not really listening. You're singing, 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 but they're not actually listening to what they're singing because what they're singing is about worshipping Guru, but they're not really worshipping Guru. So listening is the first step. So in this Sunya, we go into the body there and what's the fall of Sunya? Then what's the fall of Manya? So Gaviya, Sunya, Manu, Rakhiya, Pao. Means while you're singing, listen to it. And then in your mind, Man, keep love. It's a bit like Japji Sahib, like I just said. Start off with Gaviye, Sunye, then Maniye. And also, one way of understanding that is to concentrate, listen. Like you say to your kids, it's not just about listening, it's about doing what you're told. Listening can be doing what you're told, not just listening with your ears. Then afterwards, it becomes into your reality. Initially, you're just doing it because you're told to do it. Later on, you think, now I want to do it. I met a, a Gyani recently, he went to the ch prisons. And he taught people keep you know, part of the six again. He was doing seva of the people in the prisons. He taught them Japji Sahib and then they said, Thank you so much, that was amazing. They said, Tell us what else we should learn now. And he said, Chardo, stop doing it. They go, Come on, what do you mean? Stop doing it. Because we can't stop doing it. We love it, we can't stop doing it. He goes, That's what I wanted to hear. Don't do it because I tell you, or and do it because you want to do it. So the Gaviye, Suniye, and then next bit will be Tanu Pyaar Ajayagawa Devaste, and then in your mind, to see the Kogi. You keep that Rahat yourself because it will be a love thing. It will become Manne. In your mind, to see the Kogi. This is the Sikhi thing. Pella Suno and do, after some time, you will accept it and to see Karogi with your own love. And then the next bit is Dukh Parhar. What happens if we do this? Dukh Parhar Sukh Kar Lejai. Your duk you will leave hand parahat. Your duk pareharja. And then your sukh you will take home. Now in one way everybody wants to leave their duk. But to take this to the simple, your sadness and happiness comes into your house. Sadness goes, happiness. That's beautiful. Everybody wants that. At dunyami level. But actually, there's a deeper meaning to this, a more spiritual meaning. And what is that duk? We can examine what duk is in a spiritual way. Mara says ki duk is what is duk? Like for example, one thing is, we have expectations. When they're not met, we get duk. We keep ass or kiwi. We have ass in our mind. When we don't get it, we break. In our marriages, so many marriages break for the same reason. So many expectations what it's going to be like. No one talked about it. They get married and the two don't, don't work. One side wants this, other side wants that and clash. And then when you don't get what you want, that's it. For the dream is gone. Fear that's bust, the evilness comes out. <laughs> you just go for it. Because you didn't get what you wanted. But Maharaj is telling us, ki leave your expectations. Also, there's other bits about, ki, what do I want? Dukhi is kind of relative, you know. 
You have sometimes you have so much suk. If you don't have duk, you won't understand what duk is. We're terrified of duk, but actually we need duk to appreciate our suk, because it's a relative thing. Now we're here for us. Duk is losing our job for a couple of weeks. Duk is maybe not getting the iPad that we wanted. People in some other part of the Vietnam or some place where people are really poor, for them, duk is that that day they didn't find the amount of coke bottles they had to find to recycle. They couldn't have a full meal. That's their duk. If they're happy, if they find 10 extra coke cans, they can have a good meal. So relatively, it's very important. Because for us, what we think is duk is not really duk. We are already in that 1%. When you know they had that revolution like in, in Wall Street and stuff, the 99% worship, we're the not, we are the 1%. Actually, if you total it down, we've got houses, we've got cars, we've got everything. And still, we think, oh, man, duk lagya. And the banda who's got like, you know, you see people with no arms, and they're washing dishes with their feet, because they need to wash dishes to earn money. Also, Mara says, look, you have to have duk to have soap. There's a beautiful line from Gurbani, Nanak bolan chakana, duk chad mangiye sok. Sok duk duwe kar kapde, pehre jaye manukh. Mara says, look, it's a bit silly that all of you are asking for only sok. You need duk sometimes, because how will you appreciate? We need to wear two clothes, duk and sok together. We need to have a little bit of duk to appreciate. Sometimes we go to God when we get duk. If we're happy, we forget God. That's why it says duk daru suk rog paya, ja suk taam na hui. When we get so much suk, we forget why guru. When we get some duk, we remember why guru. It's life, isn't it? Sometimes a slap from why guru is to remind you ki menu polna, and that's a gift. And that time, that's a gift. At that time, it doesn't feel like a gift. It feels like pain. But it's a gift. Even 84 was a gift to the Pant. Before 84, there were no six around. The one was Amritari. You couldn't take Amrit. You couldn't find Pant Pyari. After 84, bears are Khalsa everywhere. All over the place is Khalsa. You can't get away from them. <laughs> you know, this is a gift to the Pant. We crying about it. Maharaj gave us a tupper, we'd forgotten why grew, and they came back and showed us Yadraku. And now we never forget E4, but we also never forget why grew. Now, another way of understanding ki puran hoi hamari asa, tor pajan ki rahe piyasa. What do we want? Guru Gobesi telling us, what I want is to remember you. And then there's a line, what is the real suk? We understand, duk. What is suk? Maharaj says, ki look. So suk moko sant pitavo, batavo, trishna buje, mantri pitavo. Tell me that peace that keeps my trishna, my thirst full. What is that peace? Saad sang har kirtan gaiye. In the saad sang, when we sing kirtan, that is a suk that we can find. Kaho nanak vada pagi paiye. Even to come to this sangat right now, when we sang kirtan, to find that suk of Vaheguru, of singing kirtan, that's the greatest luck for us. To find why Guru through Kirtan, we're lucky, we're blessed. That's why we said Vardapagi. In the same way, we said Vardapagi as he We should be thanking why Guru. The next bit, another duk, just for the last bit, is ego. Ego is the biggest duk as well. Mara says, Home dira rog hai, daru bi ismahi. Kirpa kare ji apni, ta gurka shabad kamahi. Home is the biggest disease. I'm suffering from that disease. If you ask somebody who's on, a de on their deathbed, they go, I got too much duk. Too much duk. I got all this disease, eating me, I can't walk, I can't talk. Home is a disease. But the solution is inside home. Then it says, Nanak keh sunne jano, Nanak keh suno jano, it sanjam duk jai. If we lose home, this is the way to lose our duk. So one duk we're not even aware of sometimes, I'm not aware of all the time, is this home duk. The connection with Waiguru is so strong, the level that people reach to, initially when we, feel, when we meet Waiguru, we find happiness from Waiguru. You know? We have, wow, found Waiguru, start to cry, start feeling the anand, we get bliss. At the some point, to be separated becomes into Dukkha. At the point we find Sukh, then Sukh, but afterwards, it becomes our normal state, then the minute you're separated, you get Dukkha. And the rest yesterday we were singing this Kirtan by Pai Gurdashi and he was talking about ki, um, 
When the bird sang outside my door, then my lift got broken. My love got broken for my wife grew. And then what happened? I got duk. I started to cry. And he started to cry. Akia majari gai. Chatrik is Sabadesun Akia majari gai. When he listened to the Shabbat of the Chatrik, he woke up and then his eyes started to cry. So the level, the level that Pai Gadasi is at is obviously a very deep level. But that's something to understand as well. That home is our duk. I think we'll leave. <laughs> we'll come to the end. So what we'll do is just finish off with a bit of simran. What is suk? What is duk? And Mara says, if you want to do suk, you want to do seva, do simran. So we'll just go into the last bit of Guru, Guru, Guru Karman Mor, Guru Biname, Nahi Hor. That without Guru, there's nobody for us. And next week, we'll go into the rest of this body and talk about what was Par Braham and Guru. The difference, the little talks about that. So, sorry about that. Pull out your come off. We'll finish off with a simran. And then just do Sifati at the end. Vahe Guru Vahe Guru